Hey guys and welcome back to another one of your favorite videos where I take you shopping and we immediately flip the item that I'm finding at the store. I'm also going to show you some things that I passed on whether it be price or I just felt like it wasn't really going to suit my own style or my uh, resale booth style like a couple of these things a lot of the stuff was just overpriced and I couldn't get a profit off of it which is fine still I feel like this Goodwill is one of the lower priced ones and there was some neat stuff here I've noticed that there's just not a whole bunch but let's start out with this piece right here it looks okay I'm not really into that alligator effect that it has going on but I think I'm going to try out something new on here which is to use some copper rub and buff I've never used copper rub and buff before and I expected it to be a lot brighter because copper is more of a bright orange color but this is a really brown metallic color I think it's more along what I would consider to be like an oil rubbed bronze it definitely does not look copper in my opinion but I do actually like how it looks so I'm just going to put it on here with this little foam brush and I didn't want to get full coverage because I did want some of that original gold to show through just a little bit to give it some dimension. Now that that's all done and dry, I'm going to start building a vignette here like I do in all my videos. If you are new here, what I do is I put together all the items that I flipped into a beautiful little vignette at the end of the video. The next thing I'm going to show you is this plate, which matches another one that I got, but it was overpriced at $4.99. I'm sure if you've been watching for a while, you remember that plate. These cute little canisters, I thought I could not pass up. They are perfect for spring, really affordable at $3.99 and $2.99. And I put these right away in my booth. I ran them through the dishwasher, of course, and took off all the stickers and sticker residue. But look at how beautiful they are. They look so good in the hutch that I have in my booth. I have a really, really big china hutch in my booth that I use to stage all my items. I like to make my items in my booth look like how somebody might stage them in their home and I think that helps them sell but it also is just fun for me. I also picked up this little tea dispenser I guess you would call it so you put the tea bags in there and you can pull them out from the bottom. I thought this was so cute and I think it was either $1.99 or $2.99 and then look at these I swear I was in canister heaven or croc heaven I guess. These were handmade crocs with these cute little like swans or ducks on here and it had an, uh, a handwritten note in the clay on the bottom that was for for their mom and dad from the 1985 I think it says and I thought it was so cute with that little green ribbon on top I hope somebody swoops those up I also picked up this was $2.99 it's a Port Marion bowl and then it has this cute little stack of coasters that are all tea themed so I'm guessing the same person donated a lot of the stuff that I bought today but look at how cute it is plastic these little coasters but each one has a different teapot on it it's really cute and it is now in my booth I tried to put all my tea items together in one spot to help gravitate somebody's eye towards that area if they are somebody who likes teacups or drinks tea or collects teapots or tea related items or they just like English country style I try to really put all of that together in one area. I think that helps it sell better as well. And of course, use your drawers to decorate with in your own home or to decorate with in your booth if you have a small space. The next thing I got was this cute little rooster. It was only $1.99 and I wanted to try and make it look like brass. And so I took my gold rub and buff and put it all over the entire rooster but it didn't get very good coverage. I'm not sure why. And if you've used Rub and Buff before, you may already know this, but when you put on a second coat, it reactivates the first coat and it just kind of slides around instead of being able to really build. It's hard to do layers of this to get full coverage if it's not giving you full coverage on the first layer. Does that make sense? <laughs> so then I thought, okay, well, this isn't turning out how I wanted it to look. 
and it looked a little bit boring and you could still see some of the color coming through in some spots so I thought okay well maybe I can do like a white wax over it and that will make it look like it's meant to look this worn and showing everything through but even that I didn't really like I want to know your feedback on how this turned out and let me know if this is something you think is cool or if you think it is just something that is butt ugly <laughs> let me know in the comment section and something else that I learned recently that I want to share with you is that when you apply a wax onto something it will reactivate the wax that's underneath it and I didn't realize that. I thought you could do more layers, but it doesn't work like that. So when I put the white wax on, it just kind of made all the gold come off. And this is what I ended up with at the end. I don't think it's horrible, but it's definitely not the look that I had intended originally. But I will say it looks really good how I stage it later. The next thing I got was this. I have no idea what this was. I just thought it was really unique and I wanted to turn it into a cloche. I think it might have originally been a hanging vase with like a metal hanger that held onto it. I really don't know. But I had this wood round that I bought a bunch of from Hobby Lobby when they were on sale. So this wood round I think I probably spent around 2 or $3 for. And then that cloche itself was $4. So I'm in for $6 at this point. And I'm going to just go in hard with this cloche theme that I'm doing for this. And I think it would look really unique. So I found a cone-shaped foam in my stash of foam that I got from a yard sale one time. I have like a whole bunch of foam in different shapes. I have spheres, I have squares, I have these cone-shaped ones, <laughs> but I have not used them. So now it's finally time to use this cone. And I'm going to put moss all over it using a hot glue gun. And I'm going to really, really glue it down good so that hopefully it doesn't shed too much. And then I think I will attempt the hairspray to hold the uh, uh, moss on here before I sell it. We will see how that turns out. But as I was working on it, it wasn't looking as cottagey or whimsical as I was wanting it to or like gardeny, I guess. It started looking more Christmas. <laughs> But, I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. And I think it depends on how I'm going to stage it, whether it'll look Christmas or not. But I noticed once I put the cloche on that that tree is just way too short. Or I should call it a topiary, so we're not getting this Christmas idea <laughs> stuck in our heads. But this topiary was way too short. So if you remember from one of my last videos, I had bought this random piece of wood from the Goodwill bins and a lot of you said that you thought it was a French rolling pin but I think what it actually is is a hanger rod for a closet. I think somebody had just donated a piece they cut off of a hanger rod but um, either way I'm using it. <laughs> so I just had my husband cut me a two inch piece to help lift the tree or topiary. Sorry we're saying topiary because it's not Christmas. But to lift this topiary up and make it look more like a gardeny thing. And so I put did the whole E6000 and hot glue trick on here so that it would stick instantly and cure later. And that worked out great. And then I'm going to put it inside the cloche. I did actually end up painting the bottom of the foam a darker green just to kind of camouflage that foam. But it looks really good in here now. And I think when I stage it all at the very end... It won't look Christmassy, but let me know if it still does look too Christmassy to you or if you can imagine something. These two pieces here are $0.99 cents and $1.99, and my daughter actually picked out this blue vase, and I think it's gorgeous, and I thought they would make a great pairing in my booth. I priced the vase at $5.95 and the picture at $3.95. The next thing I want to show you is how my whole hutch looks together. So a lot of you ask to see my booth in the videos. You want to see it more. You want to um, watch me stage the booth more. And I am honestly shocked by how many of you resell. There's so many of you watching that are resellers. And I can't even imagine how many booths are out there. I think that is so amazing. And I'm really proud of all of you for getting out there, starting your own business, running your own business, and being creative. That's just amazing. And all of you are women, which is just even cooler. I love it. The next thing I got was this beautiful pear painting. The frame on it was this pretty burl wood with gold. And I definitely didn't want to go over that with any kind of paint or rub and buff just because that burl wood was so special. It made my booth have a lot more character and 
I wish I actually had a bigger booth or a second booth because I wanted to stage this next to a little dining set, but I don't have one right now. And so I just had to do my best and hang it on this wall here with some other things in the similar color scheme with all the yellows and browns and golds. But the next thing I have is another frame and it is like an enameled finish. It was 99 cents or $1.99. And um, I had some prints in mind that I wanted to put on here. I bought them off Amazon last fall, I think. And it turns out they were smaller than the frame. So this is a five by seven and I was picturing it as a four by six for some reason, who knows. But <laughs> I do have all of these books that you guys have grown to love very much. And a lot of you have purchased them off of Amazon and I wanna thank you for that. I do make a tiny commission on Amazon for the things that sell in my Amazon store in the description box just for an idea if somebody sell or if, if I sell like two thousand dollars worth of items on my Amazon store I think I'll make a couple bucks like it's really not a whole lot of money at all but it does help every dollar counts and just watching my video today, you're literally supporting my family's income. So you're the reason that my kids get to do Taekwondo. You're the reason that we get to go on vacation this summer for the first time in a very long time. And you're the reason why we get to live in a beautiful house and not worry about having to um, wonder where our money's coming for <laughs> paying our bills. So just know it really is a huge difference in our lives just having you click and watch this video. So I wanted to thank you very, very much for supporting our family business. But now it's time to stage a few more things together here. I wanted to kind of change it around because it wasn't fitting in my mind how I thought it should with all the items as I keep adding in more of them. So I thought that these three together went really well, but I'm gonna move it around again later. <laughs> the next thing that I'm gonna show you is this painting. It was only $2.99, I thought it was really pretty. In fact, I've seen paintings exactly like this, but much bigger in home goods and stores like that for like $200. So $2.99 for this little cute painting is a steal of a deal, I think. And it will go up for sale in my booth as well. And I kind of started noticing that I had this really warm tone theme going on. Usually I do cool tones. I do grays, beige, blue, things like that silver, but today I'm doing gold and bronze and reds, and I'm gonna do something in deep green as well later in the video. And um, right here, I'm sure you can obviously tell, <laughs> my husband is making a wood frame around here. He's getting really good at doing this. And he just cut all the pieces to fit one at a time and then sanded them down really well. And then later on, I'm going to stain it. But he got so excited that he built this frame really well that he just went ahead and attached it to the painting, whereas normally I would stain them before we attached it. So we had to tape it off a little bit and then I will put the stain on right now. I'm using this water-based stain throughout the whole video today because regular stains really irritate my airways because anything that is an oil-based product has a very strong smell to it that really irritates my throat and my lungs. So I try and avoid that now or I go full hazmat suit <laughs> when I use stuff like that. Sometimes you have to use oil-based products because the water-based ones just don't cut it. I, uh, there are times where I can't use a water-based product because it's not going to work well enough or won't be durable enough, etc. So, and you'll see a lot of times my husband will do anything where we're doing some oil-based products. You'll see later in this video as well because he's going to do something next with an oil-based stain, a gel stain actually. But look at how good this frame looks. That would really brings this up a notch and makes it look really high-end like you would have got it from Kirkland's or one of those high-end home decor stores. This is my favorite piece of the whole video today. I think it was $4.99 maybe $3.99 and uh, right here my husband is just giving it a light sanding on the inside. I thought it was going to be really hard to paint on the inside of this without using spray paint like to hand brush paint this. And so I asked him if he could stain the inside with a gel stain. So here he is prepping and then he's gonna stain it with some general finish gel stain in the color brown mahogany, I believe. And um, since I can't be around the oil-based products, like I was saying, he's gonna take over and do this part of the staining. And it turns out gorgeous. I feel like I should have asked him to do the whole thing and just keep the whole thing wood. 
but it does turn out really cool with the paint that I'm gonna do on here. So here he is just rubbing on the gel stain. Now that the gel stain has cured for two days, I brought it inside and I'm gonna be painting it in this beautiful deep, deep green color by Fusion. I can't remember the name of it. Um, and I accidentally broke the container it was in. <laughs> so I have it in a new container. So I really don't know the name of the color, but you could look on um, their website or in person and just find this really deep, deep green. It's pretty much their darkest green that they offer. It reminds me a bit of a Charleston green. Have you ever heard of that? It's like a green black almost, but it's stunning. It, gave, it gives sophistication to anything that you put on it. It's masculine and feminine at the same time. It's just, it's a perfect green, I'm gonna have to say. <laughs> and it looks gorgeous. That satin look that it has, that beautiful sheen it has. And I don't have to put any clear coat on Fusion. It's a really durable paint. But the last thing that we are going to flip is this cute little lamp. It had a massive lampshade on it that was obviously not meant for it. And when I took it off, I realized that I actually liked how it looked without the lampshade. So the other day I was at the Goodwill bins and I found the cutest little tiny light bulb. And I decided that I'm just gonna put that tiny light bulb in there and do this rub and buff on that little white sleeve that goes over the electrical to make the whole thing appear pretty when you look at it without a lampshade and make it all cohesive. And um, since we are going with the gold, we have the gold colors that are in the painting. We have the gold on the rooster and now we have the gold on the lamp. It's all co cohesive together as this one really beautiful vignette. Oh, and also that little small enamel frame has gold on it too. But look at this cute little light bulb. It was inside of a broken Christmas village house. So it was gonna be thrown away, I guarantee it. And now I got this light bulb that I probably spent like one penny on <laughs> since it's so lightweight and the Goodwill bins charge you by the pound. But I had to adjust the harp on here because of the fact that it was a little bit bent out of, out of the right shape. So you can do this with any of your lamps too if they get a little wonky just slowly bend and push it back into the place where it's supposed to be. I considered taking the harp off altogether, but I'm glad I didn't because it gives the piece a little more balance. And thankfully, <laughs> this lamp works. I didn't have to rewire it at all. And I think the vignette is coming together really well. So it seems like I kind of put together two different vignettes that work well together. This one right here, these three items together, I think work perfectly. They all have that beautiful deep green. The gold goes really well with the colors of the painting in there or the sketch of the botanical. And it goes well with the brown inside this little magazine rack and the brown of the wood round for that topiary. And then this side is all the warm tones. So here's where I want your feedback, guys. Do you like the rooster or does it look ugly? Do you like warm tones for decorating? That is what I really want to know because I personally don't decorate with a lot of warm tones. I used to. I used to be all for it. But for some reason, I just am not into it anymore. I don't know. I guess it's just a phase. But I know there has got to be some of you out there that like decorating with the reds and the oranges and the, the yellows and stuff like that. So let me know in the comment section down below if you like the warm tones of the second little vignette here with all the red and the painting and the rooster, etc. 
So let me know what you think. But together, I think this turned out so fun and unique. Definitely unique, which is what I'm always going for. Let me know which of these flips was your favorite as well, because that helps me to continue to make content that you like. But thank you so, so very much for watching my videos. And thank you to those who are sharing my videos, because I can see when you guys share my videos, it lets me know how many people are sharing my videos. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing that because it's something small maybe to you, but to me it's a big deal that someone out there is sharing to support our business, our family business that our children can be proud of. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe down below and I will see you next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.